Now I want to talk about liquefied natural gas. And the abbreviated called LNG. Now, we talked about natural gas as being one of the big three hydrocarbons, coal, oil, and natural gas. Natural gas is a gas, which means it's lighter than air and floats. Um, it's mostly made up of methane, so the first, the first three, four elements are methane, ethane, propane, and butane. These are all gases. Now, this one is 90% of natural gas, and what we're going to do is we're going to freeze this stuff, pack it really tight, and ship it across the ocean. Now, currently, in the United States, 64 million homes are served by natural gas of 100 million. That means that two-thirds of the United States has natural gas, which we use for our water heaters, and we use for our stoves, and we use for central heating, which is very nice stuff. It gives us a very comfy, high, very thermodynamically nice uh, lifestyle. And so this is 64 million homes. Big, it's a big part of the, of the hydrocarbons in the U.S. 85% of the production is coming from domestic, 15% from Canada. Now the reason it has to be Canada is that you can't move this stuff very far. It has to go through pipelines and it can't come, uh, can't, it, without this liquefied natural gas process, it can't, come, it can't be imported like from Saudi Arabia. So it, it's all in the US or Canada currently. Now what these LNG guys come along, they say, you know, we're gonna eventually need to import this stuff from far away and we're gonna have to do it um, we're going to have to compress the stuff because it's too, it's not, it does, it's great for pumping into homes through big pipes, but not, not for transporting over the ocean. And the reason that this thing, this process intrigues me the most is one, it uses refrigeration, which I like anything that has to do with thermodynamics. And two, you will, it allows you to go out and do some really interesting economics. So here you are, let's say you're out in Saudi Arabia in the middle of the desert. And these guys have no trouble. They, they, they drill for oil, they put it in a pipeline, they drop it in a cargo ship, and it goes to, let's say, the U.S. So oil moves very nicely from, from any, any remote spot in the world, you know, through a pipeline or uh, whatever. But in the case of natural gas, this stuff, it's so far away from any customers that they flare it. Natural gas is flared in, in the production of oil. It, they don't it doesn't have any value and they don't want it to accumulate somewhere in a low spot and explode so they just burn it it's just it's just a nuisance product so let's say you're in the natural gas business well before we go into the natural gas business let's talk about one of the big problems in the natural gas business is that when you transport this stuff you don't put it into something that looks like a regular old shipping container you put it into something that has three or four end spheres and they're spheres and they look like bombs. And so LNG, whenever people see it and the LNG companies say, well, we wanna build a dock at your city, the people yell, no, no, we don't want bombs at our city. So they make these LNG ships dock, uh, you know, a mile offshore. So they have to go build, um, they have to go build docking systems that, you know, it's a pain in the butt where these oil tankers just go right in anywhere they want. They oil and it spills but it doesn't really burn but this stuff you know does burn and it floats on water so it it really could make a, a fiery mess but so these people have to deal with extra effort to build natural gas liquefied natural gas processing so one more thing one of the things I was looking for is how efficient is LNG in terms of the total energy to uh, cost what does it cost in energy to actually move the thing what's the efficiency and it didn't see any data because I don't think it's really a problem. As long as it's energy positive, I'll tell you why I don't think it's a problem. I read that it, every when this thing is being transported, you're losing 0.25% per day, which translates into 1% every four days. So you're losing natural gas from just 
vaporizing off because it's it's not it's hard to keep something frozen or refrigerated down to minus 260. So you're losing 1% every four days. So you want to be able to move this thing through the processing pretty quickly or you lose you lose more. It's just wasted energy. Now, the refrigeration step is massive. You've got to take, like I said, you've got to take all of the fluid down to minus 240, 260, and the size of it, which is good news, it, it shrinks from a bowling a beach ball down into a ping pong ball. It has a 600x reduction in size, which is the good news. It allows it to be, it's trunk so that you can move it in an efficient manner. Here's the point that I want to get to before I wrap up nat liquid nit liquefied natural gas, is if you go over to the house here, U.S. house, and you say, I can sell this stuff for a buck. And you kind of look at the processing the, to get the natural gas to the house, and then you look at the dock, because we have to dock it, and you also have to use uh, refrigeration, which means you have to have water to heat it up, so there's a heating process here. And then you have the, the tanker ships, the bombs. And then you have the other dock over here. And then you've got to get this stuff from the remote oil well. So this is, this is far out maybe in the desert. So you have to get it from the oil well. Maybe you, you probably freeze it here. So you, you freeze it, you dock it, you ship it. You dock it, you, you heat it again, so this is heat, and then you've got it into the pipeline system and up to the house. Now, what you can do is you go out to these guys here and you say, you know, this process is a real pain in the butt. I mean, I, this is, I'm going to have to spend 90 cents to get here, I'm going to have to spend 75 cents to get here, I'm going to spend 50 cents to get here, I'm going to spend, I mean, it's going to be 10 cents or 40 cents just to refrigerate it. So I have to do this massive, this massive amount of work to move this thing forward. I'm going to give you a penny. That's all I'm going to give you. You're right now flaring that stuff so it has zero value to you. I will take it, give you a penny, really low price, and I will go through this entire gyration to move it to the U.S. customer. And so when I was looking for the amount of energy put into natural gas to do this whole process, it, it's not really germ, it's not really the critical component. It, it is a power, um, energy positive, because you're dealing with such a great energy source, liquid, nat liquid nat or natural gas, and you can go out here and negotiate so aggressively because they have, they're not close to the customer. So LNG, I'm really intrigued by this as a business to go into in the long term because when we run out of domestic and Canadian production, we have this profitable business. Who, I mean, it's almost like, who cares? I don't want to say that, but who cares whether or not it's just wasting a lot of natural gas if you're getting it so cheaply? I mean, that's, that's the business side of the world. Where you just, you're not really an environmentalist. You're like, bottom line. Bottom line, we can really beat these guys up on price because they have no option. So liquefied natural gas, it's only 1% of the U.S. right now. Um, most of the talk on the websites are about how expensive all this stuff is. They're, it's all in business plans saying, how much does this cost, this cost, this cost, this cost, because they're getting ready for the future when domestic and Canadian production, production drops. So 1% um, now, very intriguing business to go into. Very good place for energy consultants to sniff around long-term potential. Um, that's LNG. I'm going to wrap it up now.